Hello, I'm Bruce Davey and I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes about computer networks, the systems approach. This is the textbook that I first uh, worked on with Larry Peterson starting back in 1995, now in its fifth edition. And what I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about is what exactly is the systems approach and why do we think it's a good idea to use the systems approach for teaching networking to students. So, as I said, we started on this book back in 1995. We're in the fifth edition now. And what we were trying to do back then was we were trying to teach students the principles of networking, trying to get them to understand what fundamental things you need to understand to tackle problems in networking. And we were trying to get away from the idea that networking was the set of things that had already been figured out, that a set of existing artifacts would be handed down, described, and you'd just learn about the, the current state of things, and then you'd be done. We thought it was much more important to teach networking as an evolving field, that you would learn a set of principles, and then having learned those principles, you'd be able to tackle new problems as the field evolves and changes around you. Well, now looking back with the benefit of 15 plus years of hindsight, I think we can say that that approach to teaching the principles has worked out extremely well. Obviously, the internet has gone through a huge amount of change since 1995. At that point, it had really just reached the public consciousness. Most people were uh, still connecting to the internet either through their, their work or if they were on the leading edge, they were connecting at home through dial-up modems. Today, of course, everybody connects through broadband, billions of people are on the internet, and many of the, the technologies have evolved in significant ways. But it's, we still find that many of the principles that we wrote down in the first edition continue to be correct. Of course, we've updated the book many times since then as new technologies come along, but we still find that this approach to using principles works extremely well. So that's probably the first thing to think of in the systems approach. It's about teaching fundamental principles that will enable students to tackle new problems that they come along, rather than just teaching a set of existing artifacts as if they've been handed down from on high. And we feel this is really great for getting students excited about the field, because it's not just, this is the way it is, learn it. It's, this is a set of things that will enable you to understand the field as it evolves in front of you, and to make your own contribution to this exciting and changing field. So we think it's a great way to prepare students and to get them excited and engaged. The other really critical aspect of the systems approach is that it encourages big picture thinking. And in fact, if I try to define the systems approach, I would say it's about thinking about complete systems rather than looking at small, constrained components in isolation. This often puts us at a bit of conflict with the more traditional layered approach to teaching networking, because in some sense, Layering is exactly about trying to block out most of the system from your thinking as you just focus on a single layer. And while that's a very helpful tool for managing complexity, it isn't always the best way to design a system. And it's certainly not always the best way to learn about networking because many of the technologies really span the layers. A great example of that is security. You find security at the Mac layer, in some of the wireless protocols. You'll find it at, the, say, the transport layer, um, with things like the secure socket layer, you'll find that the application layer with things like privacy enhanced mail. And so you need to understand security outside of the context of layering. So we have a whole chapter on security that explains how fundamental principles of security can be applied to all the layers. And there are also situations where certain functions really need to span across the layers. Things like congestion avoidance uh, cannot really just be tackled at a single layer. And so again, we teach those in a, in a whole chapter on congestion avoidance that enables you to see how congestion avoidance works outside of the context of layering. At the same time, layering is an enormously helpful tool, and so we have a whole chapter on link layer issues, a, a, a pair of chapters on network layer issues, and so on. So, so far, principled approach, big picture approach, those are probably the two most important things to the systems approach. Another really important aspect is that we try to teach about real deployed systems and we learn our principles from looking at those deployed systems. So for example, we use TCP as the most popular widely deployed transport protocol to teach about a lot of the principles that you need to understand in understanding transport protocols. Things like reliability, flow control, congestion avoidance, all of those things come about as you try to understand a transport protocol, and we use examples from TCP. But we don't stop there. We don't say, TCP, it's done. Now you understand how transport protocols have been built. 
we also explore the open issues in TCP. So, for example, congestion avoidance is still not a settled topic, and there's been a number of different approaches to try to do better. And so we look at some of those different approaches. So again, it's trying to get students excited about the idea that this is field is continuing to evolve, there are new challenges coming up every day, and we're trying to provide them with the tools that will let them tackle those challenges. And finally, we look a lot at issues of implementation and performance. And throughout the book, you'll find examples of pieces of code that show how some aspect of, of the system can be implemented. And we also focus on how you do implementation in a way that meets performance goals, because that's critically important to the deployment of real systems. So summing up, I'd say that the things to think about when you think about the systems approach are teaching fundamental principles, not just artifacts, preparing students for the future so they can tackle new problems as they come down the road, not teaching networking as a static field, thinking about the big picture, thinking about how one component interacts with other components, thinking about how all those components can be put together to meet the needs of applications and users, thinking about the uh, the performance and the implementation of a real system, those are what I think of as the core components of a systems approach. We found it a very helpful way to teach students and to get students excited about the field, and we hope that you will too. We encourage you to look further at the book, and if you'd like to hear more about it, feel free to get in touch with us. Thanks very much.